earthquakes are measured in two ways. One way is by measuring the intensity. This is a way of describing how the ground shakes. Um, for small earthquakes, this is based on what people actually felt. For larger earthquakes, it's based on um, how structures react to the shaking. And so the scale that's most often used here in the United States is called the Modified Mercalli Intensity Scale. And this is a little write-up that describes that scale. Intensity is always given in Roman numerals. It keeps it um, separated from the magnitude. So I'm magnet an intensity of 1. Um, nobody really feels it. You'll never notice it. An intensity of five, people awaken, you've got things breaking, falling off, trees and poles are moving around, all the way down to a 12. And in this case, huge undulating waves along the surface. The ground, the ground actually throws things up into the air, and there's pretty much nothing left. The good news is those, those don't happen very often. Um, so now, the intensity is actually measured by taking first-hand accounts from people. Um, the USGS actually uh, has a way to re record what you felt during an earthquake, which is pretty amazing. Now, every earthquake can have lots of different intensities based on where you are. And you should have watched the video that kind of went over these things already to describe the different things that affects intensity. Um, here is a map showing the shaking or the intensity from the Mexicali earthquake. This happened on Easter morning back in 2010. Um, and so you can see earthquakes down here where it's red. These are intensities of 9s and 10s. So lots and lots and lots of shaking. Even over in Yuma here, they shook quite a bit. Those were only 5s. Um, so, so people definitely felt it, definitely knew it was an earthquake. Um, but not too much damage. Now on the other side, we have the magnitude. And you've probably heard of the Richter scale. This is one scale um, that describes magnitude. So the magnitude is the amount of energy released by an earthquake. And how we do this, the Richter scale is based on two things. Number one, how far away the earthquake was, because energy dissipates over time, over distance. So how far away it was, and the highest amplitude wave on the seismograph. So this means how high is that? So this is basically how hard did the ground shake in that case. Now the Richter scale isn't used, it, it can be used only for small earthquakes um, that are measured pretty close to where your seismogram is. But the USGS switched over to using the moment magnitude. This works for pretty much any kind of, um, any size of earthquake, it also works for very distant earthquakes. Now this takes into account things like how rigid the rocks are, how easy do they break, how long is the fault, what size of the fault area actually moved. Um, to give you a kind of idea of what that looks like, this is a picture um, from Alaska right after the 1964 Good Friday earthquake. What this used to be was flat ground. What you see here is actually a fault scarp. So this over here on the right is the hanging wall that dropped and slid down along that fault line, which is pretty amazing. And you can see how far it is here. It's probably a good 10 feet worth of displacement. So you can figure out the area that's displaced. Um, so when you hear big earthquake magnitudes or you hear stuff from the USGS, those are going to be moment magnitudes rather than Richter. Now, while every earthquake can have a number of different intensities based on where you are, what the conditions are beneath your feet, there's only one magnitude because a single earthquake gives off a given amount of energy. Now if there's aftershocks, those have their own magnitudes. They give off their own amount of energy. Now magnitude is a log-based scale, which is a little confusing, but what happens is every time you go up one order of magnitude, the amplitude of the wave, so how high the wave is, actually goes up by 10 times. That's why it's a logarithmic scale. However, Every order of magnitude you go up, the energy release actually goes up by 32 times. That's a lot. Um, so if you're looking like the dis if you're looking between a magnitude two and magnitude three earthquake, the difference is pretty small. They give off pretty similar amounts of energy, but the difference in really big earthquakes is enormous. And so to create enough energy to make like a magnitude 9.5 earthquake like Valdivia, Chile in 1960, you have to store a massive, 
massive amount of energy. Um, now what you often hear is people will be like, oh, well, they have lots of little earthquakes in this area, so it's safe because it's releasing all the energy. Um, but that means to get the if to get uh, release the same amount of energy as a magnitude nine earthquake, you would have to have 32 magnitude eight earthquakes. I think both of them sound pretty terrible, right? Um, so that doesn't work nicely. But what this chart shows you is sort of the energy equivalent of some big events. And you've got Chile earthquake and Alaska and Japan earthquakes. Those are some of the largest ones ever recorded. The Krakatoa, this is a volcano that erupted in 1883. This was a massive, massive eruption. Um, the blast from the eruption was actually heard like 2,000 miles away, which is pretty amazing.